Great Scott, Mrs. Wizard, we gotta head to the clock tower at 10.04. The lightning's about to strike, and this is the car that we need to charge up. Let's get started. Are you ready, Mrs. Wizard? That was my mom's favorite movie back in the day. Really? Yes, we rented that movie at least a dozen times. Well, this is the car, not the car, but the model of car that was used in the Back to the Future movie series. It is a 1981 DeLorean DMC-12. It's here for quite a laundry list of repairs, and I've worked on several of these in the past. And they're, they're fun to work on, but if you're looking for Toyota reliability, you probably shouldn't look at a DeLorean. If you live in the Rust Belt of the United States, this is the perfect car for you though because it is stainless steel and although it can corrode, it's not perfect, but it's very likely not going to rust. The whole car is stainless steel except for the front little fascia or bumper or whatever you want to call it and also in the back is painted as well. We're going to take a look around this thing and go over why it's here. But before it left or before we do anything crazy, I definitely want to give you guys a chance to check out the quirks and features, as Daddy Doug would say. I guess this supposedly is Hoovy's dad. I don't see how. I don't see the resemblance, but let's go ahead and look around this thing. This is a really cool car. It's iconic. Literally, globally iconic. Here is the front of this DMC-12. It has the quad headlights, turn signals, and says, obviously, DMC DeLorean Motor Company there. So come around to the side, you see these really sweet wheels. I don't know if you call them turbine wheels. They look like they have blades of a turbine. They actually are different size from front to rear. They're staggered. And let me show you guys where you put gas in this thing. You would think it's somewhere in the back or on the sides, in the rear quarters. No, it's in your frunk, right here. Lift that up. There is the gas cap. The gas tank actually sits above the front wheels. Another quirk and feature about this car is that the windows on either side do not go down except for a tiny, tiny little section. That tiny little area right there that's actually open, you can put your hand through it. When you roll your window down, that's all you get. Just that tiny little area. And as you can imagine, it has gold wing doors. Really cool. As we go around to the back, you can see, like I mentioned, it has a plastic rear bumper filler and beautiful tail lamps. I really love those grid pattern tail lamps. It's so 80s, it's so cool. It has some dual exhaust pipes sticking out the back. This one's in pretty good condition. It's not museum quality, but it is in really good shape. As you look down that side as well, equally just as nice. Let's jump under the frunk. So you thought that this is where the engine is. Wrong, this is the frunk, like I mentioned. Here we have a bunch of spare parts and boxes and things we're going to be putting on for the customer. They included, but underneath all that is where your spare tire is. And if you have any fuel pump or fuel tank issues, also underneath all this is where that is located. Again, here's where you fill up with fuel. You just take the cap off and there you go. Put gas in. There's some access plugs, but really fairly simple underneath here. Now let's jump into the engine bay. So there's two louver panels here. Actually, you can see leaves in the window right there. It's actually just from a tree outside that blew some leaves through these little louver openings here. It didn't get into the engine bay because the engine bay is not under this panel. It's under a second panel. Let's go ahead and show you that. Here's the first one. Just a little latch right here. So that's that. We're still not to the engine yet. You can kind of see it through the louvers. These louvers. The screen, I guess you could call it. We can see how leaves and things could get in there if you park under a tree. We'll clean that out for the customer. Get that taken care of. But now let's actually get into the engine bay. And this holds itself up with this little catch right here. You just want to be careful and not break it. This is old, brittle stuff. This is a PRV V6. I think it's three liter. I might have that wrong. I know it's 174 cubic inch. It says that on the emission sticker. 
But it, PRV meaning Peugeot, Renault, and Volvo. They kind of have uh, a group effort, I guess you could call it. And it has the Bosch Jetronics system, which we don't really work on here. You can see somebody has already gone through the system with a distributor head, new hoses, and it runs decent. It just needs a tune-up and probably needs some adjustments made, which is right in through there. Oh, 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 no muffler Newton. No muffler Newton, thanks, guy. Appreciate that. I feel impressed. There's lots of wiring and things in here, like that's a ballast resistor that can cause issues with the car. Like I mentioned, they're not the most reliable cars in the world, but they're okay. They're not terrible, but they're not great. Most people don't know how to work on these PRV engines, and I've worked on so many where people have tried this or that, or took it to a backyard mechanic and botched it up, and had to actually straighten out all the, the crap work. I don't think that'll be the case here, though, luckily. What makes these difficult to work on a lot is People don't understand how the intake system works, how it has these plenum banks that goes into runners into the engine and it actually comes from the air mass meter, I guess the flap you could call it there underneath that panel. Bosch Jetronic is not very friendly to novice mechanics and also the engine itself with the timing chains and everything can be very difficult to work on. They're not very friendly to work on. But again, I don't think that's what we're going to be having to do to this car. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior. There's lots of spare parts and things inside of there as well. But at least give you a tour of what it looks like inside of a DeLorean. Welcome, ladies and gents, to 1981. And this gauge cluster is quite impressive. I love all the analog dials in there. It is absolutely beautiful. And you do see that it does say it has 17,292.4 miles on it so not terribly much not a lot of miles on here and it's going to present pretty well especially for being the age that it is if we look at this dash it's in really good condition we go over we can see we have our glove box let's go take a peek so here we go and looks like we've got some paperwork in there oh 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 and of course a hot wheels car so as we look at our dash we can see that it has just two vents and these are the only two vents for the car luckily it's a very small car but that's it we can see we have very simple radio and we have our hvac system very easy to use as well as we move back we can see it is an automatic transmission as we look at our seats these seats are kind of interesting they lay flat you're very much feeling like your feet just go straight out in front of them when you sit in this car but the seats are very nice maybe you need a little bit of cleanup on them but there's no rips there's no tears and of course he has in a very essential thing when keeping a car for a very long time is that maintenance book and if you ever want to find one we actually have one on our amazon affiliates link check that out in the description below but that is an amazing thing to keep track of everything you do to your car because if you're like me when did you do some repair and it just seems like it was yesterday when it was really like oh gosh that was six or months ago or more he does have the flux capacitor installed in this lovely delorean so we might be able to go somewhere i don't know but we we won't know where because we can't type in the day the time and all that and we'll never be able to get back but if we need to escape the world today i guess we can fire up the flux capacitor but otherwise, it is a little shelf area back there. It is not a seat. There's nowhere to sit back there. So a lot of times, two-door coupes have a small shelf seat back there. Not this one. True two-seater, but does have a more of a back area. So the storage in this car is actually pretty impressive, considering you've got this back shelf area and the front as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are, back at our steering wheel. They don't have a lovely emblem on the, the steering wheel, which we are so used to seeing on modern cars. And being that this is an 81, we have no airbag. We don't have any of those other fancy little buttons on here. We've got a steering wheel with three spokes. That is it. We, we get windshield wiper control, and I assume the blinker is over there. There he is. There's the blinker. That is it. That's only controls we've got attached to the steering wheel. So that's all we've got here. I'm curious, what does this look like on the underneath? Before I hop in, I definitely want to let you guys know, obviously there are people out there or groups that actually build these into full-blown DeLorean time machines. There's multiple different companies out there that will do it for you, but there, if I was spending the money to get one done, if I had this car and I said, I want this to be an authentic DeLorean time machine, a replica, a movie replica, there's only one name in the game, it's Video Bob's Prop Shop or Bob's Prop Shop. There's a link in the description below if you want to check out also his fan page and also his main page, but here's a picture of some of the stuff they do. 
They do Ecto-1, they do DeLorean Time Machine, they do Scooby Van, they do so many cool replicas and they're authentic and they're also usually endorsed by a lot of the actual people involved with the original movies. We actually toured Bob's Prop Shop in Texas. He also is out in Las Vegas. He has two shops. And here's a picture of one of his time machines. I've seen these in person. I've actually seen two or three of his time machines and they are definitely, you can tell they were built by commensurate professionals. So, got that aside, just wanted to let you know who does those and who you should go to if you're interested in one of those. Now let's get this thing on the lift. There's a lot of things that are actually similar, like the windshield and some of the way they did the architecture, the framework, and the way they built this car is very similar actually to Bill's Lotus Esprit S4S. You guys have seen the black one, a, a Lotus Esprit basically. A lot of things that they use are very similar, if not the parts that they use, but let's go ahead and take a look under this thing. Here's our radiator. There is no core support really other than these little pieces, the radiator bolts directly to it. Here's our fans. They are turning nice and free. We don't see really any rust on the actual frame piece, but a lot of the control arms, springs and stuff, every single one I've ever worked on is rusty like that. It's just the way that they are. Here's our horn, little coolant pipes. Brakes are good, shocks are good. Everything's looking pretty good over here. You can see actually the speedometer cable runs off the wheel. Not off the transmission, not off of anything else. Right off the wheel. Brakes are good over here as well. We can see some of our air conditioner parts here. This is underneath the frunk. You can see fuel lines and the fuel tank, things that are all up in that area. Actually right in here, you have to drop that off. This whole plate comes off. Now as we come back here, you can see coolant radiator pipes. This is coolant going to the radiator and back to the engine through these pipes, just like a Lotus. Here's our automatic transmission on the back of this PRV. It's a transaxle actually. This one's kind of leaky. And we'll go over the list here in a minute, but it's one of the issues the customer wants addressed. Here is a torn CV boots. There's one on this side. This one's torn. This one's okay. You can see it has a new fuel filter. Brand new right there. Check out our brakes. They look good. Strut is dry, nothing going on there. You can see on the outer boots on the CV shafts, they're not torn, but the clamps are a little loose from age and I can actually pull that off if I wanted to. Those need to be tightened up. If we're gonna pull these off, we might as well just put all four new boots. And here is our venerable PRV V6. This is the oil pan. L luckily, it's easy to get to things. There's the starter, there's an oil filter, there's an oil pressure sensor, our alternator. There's our exhaust manifold. On this side, this is actually a catalytic converter. You can see some of the shielding is coming off and the heat insulation. Up above is some more coolant pipes. There's the cylinder head really not hard to work on. They're just strange. Here is the muffler. On Hoovy's garage, when we had his DeLorean in and actually on a couple others, we've actually put stainless steel headers and also stainless steel exhaust. And I think Eurasian Bob has done this on one of his DeLoreans, which he has some for sale as well if you want to buy one of these. Uh, it sounds really, really good. So let's get this thing on the ground and talk about the list of repairs we're going to do to this. The customer's been very kind to include a lot of the parts and supplies to do the work that they want done. Normally I would not like that on a modern car, uh, Mercedes or a Range Rover or something. I would offer no warranty. But on these cars, I allow it because it can be so difficult to find parts. It saves me so much time. Now if a part does fail, they will have to refer to their supplier and they will have to kind of figure it out and what happened or what what not, a factory defect. 
But I am glad that all the parts are here. Let's go through the list. It's quite an extensive list, but nothing is really major. So he wants us to replace the water pump, all the belts, all of the hoses, the thermostat, the thermal time switch, replace the intake O-rings, which this would be a scary job for someone who's not affiliated with the Bostetronic system and taking the intake off and the O-rings and things, they would be like, nope, not happening, bro. But here, yep, it's happening. We're happy to take care of that on these cars. Spark plug wires, spark plug cap, rotor, things of that nature, tune up. Wants us to fix the transmission leak, which we saw on the bottom. We'll get to the bottom of that and figure out what it is. Check the car over, front suspension and rear, which we did, and we found that the CV boots were bad. It has a hot start issue, which we'll take a look at that and see what's going on. And just general check over of the fuel system, make sure everything's going well there. We wouldn't work on the fuel system, but we can definitely check it over. I can do adjustments and make sure it's doing okay. So that's pretty much for the list. Just, again, nothing major, no pulling the engine or tearing the body off the frame or anything crazy like that. And this is about the size of a list I like to see on one of these older cars. We really are getting out of any of the older cars having four pages worth of stuff. That's a restoration, and it really deserves to go to a restoration shop. Out on the west coast, there's tons of shops that do that. We don't do that here. But before this car left, I definitely wanted to get a video for you guys because it's so cool to see an iconic DeLorean DMC-12, and again, if this was my car and I wanted to deck it out fully in the time machine livery, there's only one name in the game, Bob's Prop Shop. Again, the link's in the description for that. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this DeLorean, or really the Callaway Camaro, you guys see it back there in the background, that's Hoovy's Callaway. You've heard of a Callaway Corvette? That's a Callaway Camaro which we probably will be doing a video on that. Any of those tools we use to work on these cars are in our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We really appreciate it. When you purchase something, we get a small cut. Make sure to check out Mrs. Wizard's Ways. She's got really cool videos going on there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button over there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because you don't want to miss out on that Callaway Camaro. Thanks for watching.